when someone put the city of Los Angeles to the ultimate test. Pop quiz, hot shot. There's a bomb on a bus. Once the bus goes 50 miles an hour, the bomb is armed. If it drops below 50, it blows up. What do you do? What do you do? Now, he's the only solution. Everybody hold! Are you insured? Keanu Reeves, Dennis Hopper, Sandra Bullock. After 9-11, bin Laden was able to escape and crossed from Afghanistan to Pakistan. His trail went cold. But a few months later, a shootout at this safe house in Faisalabad, Pakistan. The man taken into custody was believed to be the highest level Al-Qaeda figure ever arrested, Zion al-Abidin Muhammad Hussein, otherwise known as Abu Zubaydah. Sufan was called in. So in 2002, you get a call to speak to a Al-Qaeda detainee named Abu Zubaydah. Yes. Uh, Abu Zubaydah is a terrorist facilitator. He was involved in a series of plots to attack American and Israeli targets, and even to attack, uh, to attack the Pope um, uh, during his visit to the Holy Land. As a result of an extensive pre-publication review by the CIA, the Zubaydah chapter of Sufan's book is heavily redacted. The interrogation remains a controversial episode in the fight against Al-Qaeda. The CIA maintains Sufan's participation is still classified. Um, we've, been, we've been redacted from that chapter um, as if we were not there. But you did interrogate him? Yes, I did. Although he has been publicly identified since, his name is still technically classified. His real name is Mitchell. I, I don't... You I, cannot confirm. I cannot confirm or deny the individual's name in any way, shape, or form. So I describe him in the book as Boris. And so Boris arrives. Tell me. Then tell me the story. Boris arrives, and we believed we were getting some headways with, with Abu Zubaydah. Um, but he has different opinion about uh, how to handle this interrogation. So we said, what's your idea? And he started explaining his idea. And that's opinion. when the trouble started? Yep. Boris begins to enforce nudity, loud rock music. Yes. So there was a lot of tension between you and this contractor. The yeah, absolutely. there was there was a tension between all of us and him, you know, yeah. absolutely. And I was I was really frustrated because I think that you know this is this is not going to lead us anywhere. I mean, this guy admitted that he doesn't know anything about Islamic extremists, and here he is, trying to call the shots in one of the uh, most important programs, you know, at the time in in the nation's history. Did you confront him? Yes, absolutely. We talked about it. We talked about the techniques, and I think he just thought that I was arrogant. Um, and, you know, it was a mutual. I, I thought he was arrogant, too, so... Um, How many interrogations had you done up to that point of Al-Qaeda oh, detainees? Oh, my God. I mean, I... Guantanamo, the coal, uh, bin Laden case, uh, I don't know, dozens. How many had he done? Zero. 
Now, he's, a, he's a psychologist who oversaw this training program. He had never been an interrogator. He had no background in Islamic fundamentalism. And I, I've actually talked to Mitchell. Um, he, he, he's a great believer in science is science, as he says. And he, so he used what he thought was good science, which were experiments that had been done on dogs, to um, apply them to ways to break down human detainees. All right, let's go to the Can I just wait? Amy, I've got to just say one thing so we don't wander into some kind of legal problem. Um, it, a lawyer for Mitchell says that these were not his theories at all and that he never meant to apply them this way. That is absolutely not what colleagues of his have said, and I cite them by name in the book. The interrogation of Abu Zubaydah, it turns out, was a test run for a new CIA interrogation program. The CIA's secret waterboarding program was designed and assured to be safe by two well-paid psychologists now working out of an unmarked office in this building in Spokane, Washington. This is the headquarters of Mitchell Jessen and Associates, run by Bruce Jessen, seen here outside the building, and Jim Mitchell, who now has moved to Florida, both former military officers who both declined to talk with ABC News. I have a non-disclosure agreement that will not allow me to comment. Former U.S. officials say the two men were essentially the architects of the CIA's 10-step interrogation plan that culminated in waterboarding, demonstrated here. Associates say the two made good money doing it, boasting of being paid $1,000 a day by the CIA to oversee the use of the techniques on top al-Qaeda suspects at CIA secret sites. I can't answer any of your questions. Mitchell and a partner, Bruce Jessen, um, became advisors to the CIA's interrogation program. I think to step back, what you need to know is that the CIA had no experience, really, in interrogating prisoners. They'd never really held prisoners before. And so they, they really had no idea how to go about getting information out of people. So they turned to an incredibly strange place, which is a secret program inside the military that had studied torture and it had studied torture in order to uh, teach our own soldiers how to survive it if they were ever taken captive by some kind of completely immoral regime. Because they understood torture, the CIA turned to them and said, well, so how do you do it? And basically they reverse engineered this program in the most ironic way and what became a, a program that was defensive became instead of, it was like a blueprint for torture. It was a, you know, a, a rule book. With Sufan standing by, Boris started to experiment with sleep deprivation and low temperatures. After he complained to headquarters, the FBI ordered Sufan home. But Boris continued. By August, the Justice Department approved techniques that were even harsher. Now they could include slapping, shoving, stress positions and confinement boxes with insects. Was any actionable intelligence or any valuable intelligence gained after Boris arrived? No, we never get any actionable intelligence or any significant intelligence comparatively to what we got before when his techniques were going on. And why weren't you being listened to? I don't know. I would like to tell you, I would like to give answers. I've been reading a lot of things, a lot of different theories, but I would like to stick to the facts and I really have no idea. Eventually, three men were subjected to waterboarding. Abu Zubaydah, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, and Abdal Rahim al-Nashiri. The CIA inspector general concluded that we cannot verify that one, not one single imminent threat was stopped because of these techniques. That's very significant. An unknown number, reportedly a few dozen or less high-value terrorists, are still being held by the CIA itself in unknown locations throughout the world, perhaps indefinitely. As for Sheikh Ibn al-Libi, he went into that black hole for more than a year. But then... He resurfaced in a remarkable way as a source um, who was cited in probably the most important speech that uh, General Colin Powell ever gave. Which Everybody remembers that speech. I can trace the story of a senior terrorist operative telling how Iraq provided training in these weapons to Al-Qaeda. After we went to Iraq, after we found out that there's no WMDs, after we found out that Al-Qaeda and Saddam were not working together, 
They went back to Ibn Shaykh al-Libi, and this is all according to the Armed Services Committee. And they asked him, why did you lie? He said, well, I gave you what you want to hear. He complied. Absolutely. I want the torture to stop. I gave you anything you want to hear. But the consequences of that... Tragic. Absolutely. The, the world is different. Look at all the blood that we lost in Iraq. Look about how the Iraq war helped Al-Qaeda, both with recruits and financially. It's tragic. Tragic.